Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is part 10 on the murdered LH Tirana that we've been doing a full repair and respray on. Previous videos have gone through the entire process including how to mix and match the desired gloss level in your matte clear, repairs, primer work and the insides of all the panels had been painted so that we could bolt the entire car back together, well at least the sides anyway. I did decide to leave the bonnet and boot lid off, that was mainly just so that there was less in the booth for this first time. Um, I found sometimes the more stuff you've got in there then sometimes you can end up getting more dust and stuff in your paint job So that's why sometimes I do like to break the jobs up when possible now in the previous video I mentioned something happened and that is my reaction when it happened. I was a little bit pissed off because I'd already actually started getting some clear coat on. There's no real turning back once you've got your clear and you can't just uh, start putting base coat back on because the way my booth works, the air comes in from the left of the screen, so from the uh, front of the car, that's where the air comes in, and it'll flow down towards the back end of the car, so you might get a little bit of misty 2K overspray over that base coat. Now, if it had have been bad enough that I did need to put some color over it, I probably would have just been okay to in this instance, because it was my first coat of clear. But if it had been my second coat of clear, there's no putting base coat over your fresh clear. You'd have to wait for it to um, dry right out. So had this happened on my second coat of clear, I probably would have just done my best to blow the actual water off and then continue painting the job. Yep, it's ruined that panel or those two panels, but then I'll be able to come back and fix those two panels later on. I'm not gonna let it ruin the rest of the job. Anyway, with that hurdle out of the way, we can continue on with the rest of the job. I'll go on with the gun settings and tell you how I'm setting my gun up. So if you didn't already notice, it's the DeVilbus GTI Pro Light, known in America as the Techno Pro Light. Exactly the same gun, couple of little cosmetic changes. Uh, the US version has got no air valve on it and it's black but apart from that they're exactly the same so te 20 is the air cap and i've got a 1.3 mil fluid tip on it i like to run the fan full on this thing and have the fluid three and a half to four turns out i will change that depending on the materials but this is an ms clear so i've got it set at three and a half turns out and it's a bit of a colder day so 17 degrees celsius so i've got the pressure up to 20 degrees in the middle of summer sometimes i'll run even under 15 PSI. And again, those air pressure and gun settings will drastically change depending on the air cap that I'm using. There is a few different choices when you do get the Pro Light. So you've got TE10, TE20, and HV30. So the HV30 is a HVLP air cap. That will probably run best at around two bar. So that's actually a higher pressure than what you would imagine, being that it says HVLP. HVLP is standing for high volume, low pressure. Doesn't really make sense to me how the HVLP will run better at a higher pressure. But there you go, that's just how it is. I'm not the biggest fan of HVLP guns, so I stick to my conventional guns these days. Some of them make absolute bogus claims that their guns are HVLP when they're not. Just like the DeVilbus SGK, I do not believe for one second that that is a HVLP spray gun. However, on the side of it, it says Transtech HVLP. The way I say it, make your mind up. Your guns always used to be called Transtech. And then the other option was HVLP. You always used to give the name Transtech to your conventional or LVLP spray guns, Devilbus. So what are you doing confusing everyone unless you're simply just doing it to get past some of those laws that some of the countries do have on HVLP spray guns. Whereas you're not allowed to sell conventional spray guns or the LVLP guns either. Anyway, continuing on with the job, this Matt Clear, um, if you did miss that first video, all I did, I got the AU175, which is the flattening binder in the Chromax range, previously known as DuPont. So I mixed that up, I gave it a really good stir up, I then mixed 75% of that flattening binder with 25% Dukesone 2K clear, and then that's my clear mix, so that'll still need to be mixed at the two to one ratio with the hardener as any normal 2K clears will need to be. But just check all of those ratios, make sure you are doing it right before you do it because I don't wanna be the one sitting here telling you to mix up those paints at these ratios and then you go and mix them up like that and it doesn't work because all paints are different. You may be using a four to one clear, so in that case, you'd be mixing up your hardener at a four to one ratio after you put in your binder in. And uh, as I did say in that first video where I did do the color matching, um, it's up to you to decide which kind of uh, flatness you're looking for. And even those 
brands of materials will actually vary on the uh, overall end result of the finish that you'll get as well. So if you go and use uh, Standox flattening binder, you may find that 50% of that binder is totally enough and that gets you the exact gloss level that you're looking for. Whereas for me, 75% works. But um, I have done a bit of a blog on it on my website. So if you'd like to check that out, I've got a few pics up there. And um, yeah, just the exact way that I go about mixing and matching my 2k uh, flat clears there's actually also companies out there that have pre-mixed matte clears so they probably do the mixing for you already so um, I prefer myself to do it with a flattening binder it gives you like a little bit more leeway you're in control that way of the uh, flatness or the kind of finish that you end up getting I'd rather do it that way myself and just buy the flattening binder but some people may prefer just to buy the uh, pre-mixed flat clears. Common question I get is, can I do this with a 2K finish? So with a direct gloss, as in not clear over base. Now you could, but you couldn't get this exact finish out of it. You could do it if you wanted a satin finish, and I've done that before. I painted this trailer for a customer, and he just wanted a satin finish. So I got some of my flattening binder, and I put 25% of the flattening binder in, to 75% of the 2K color. Reason being that if you went and put 75% of the binder into 25% of the color like I'm doing here, basically this flattening binder is clear. It's got a little bit of a milky talcum haze to it. So it's got like talcum powder type stuff in there that, which is actually what makes it go flat. Now, um, the rest of it is just basically clear. So if you were to go and mix that 75% then with 25% of your color, you've got stuff all color left. So it's gonna take like five or 10 coats until you actually get coverage with it. So it's really not advised. So if you do want a full matte finish like this, just do it in clear over base. You'll probably find that it's got a little bit more UV uh, resistance to it because you've got your clear coat. So it's only really going to make for a better job at the end of the day anyway. Now, uh, the reason that I did decide to bolt most of these panels on the sides of the car was so that I got a uniform finish down the entire side. Um, I'm watching my technique here and I'm probably not doing it 100% the best, but the end result did look quite well. I think I'm overlapping a little bit too much over those doors and I definitely did on that guard there. Um, you're always learning when you're spray painting and yeah, if I was to do this with uh, normal clear then that wouldn't have been real that much of an issue but um, yeah, you do have to be careful with the flat clears because if you put more product on then you're going to actually get a higher gloss level out of it. It's not going to be much but it may still just be noticeable. As it turned out, yeah, you could not notice this outside or there might have been the very slightest little bit um, where I did overlap a little bit extra on that guard there. But um, all in all, it looks totally awesome. The owner's really happy with it. I was pretty happy with it. I learned a couple of things for myself. So if I was to go and do something like this in the future, there's probably a couple of things I'd know to do a little bit better. Um, but also uh, another advantage of putting those panels back on first was that if we were to go and scratch them, well then you can't just touch a color like this up because even base coat is shinier than that flat clear. On with our second coat straight away, all I literally did was mix up another little batch of clear coat and that was it, I continued straight on. Because I'd warmed that clear up, um, there was no flash off times at all. And hey, this is perfect product to be able to figure out whether or not it is flashed off in between coats because it's gonna go matte. If it's still shiny, well then it's not ready. Another thing to think about when you are spraying matte clears is cleanliness is next to godliness. You only get one chance. If you get a panel that is absolutely full of dust and crap, or even especially on this black car, if you had little speckles of white dust all over the top layer of your clear coat, there's no polishing that stuff out. It's matte. As soon as you get the buff onto matte clear, it's gonna go shiny. So one chance, that's it. I was fastidious about the cleanliness of the booth. I blew that car out for over an hour, vacuumed the entire thing out, made sure I was clean, made sure the booth was extremely clean. I made sure I used gun filters in the gun, strained all that paint through the gun, tack rag the absolute shit out of it, blew it down with the airline. I think I tack rag the entire car down like four times. Usually I'd just do it twice maximum of three depending on you know the kind of car that i'm doing and how i'm feeling at the time but yeah just made sure it was uh you know a, a one shot that's it you got to get it off the gun um i also wanted to do a good job for the customer he's um 
pretty decent guy. Um, he's not overly fussy, which I thought was pretty cool, but I'm um, realistic about what he's gonna get, and um, yeah, not afraid to pay for a good quality job. But um, yeah, he did want it done in a time frame, and um, yeah, I did the entire job myself, so I didn't really get much help from my business partner. That was mainly just because he was busy on other things, and that's how business goes. And um, yeah, I've actually got one of these cars myself, so I was more than happy to you know just say, mate, leave me alone on this car, I want to do the entire job from start to finish anyway. Main reason I did decide to finish this uh, video set off was that I was doing a bit of an upgrade on my website, thegunman.net.au, and I've been uh, categorizing all my videos so that you guys can basically, it's basically like a big playlist really, and I've been doing some blogs and uh, uploading photos and stuff like that over there. Um, so you can just go to all these different categories and I got to the projects category category and I thought hey This will be a good one to put in there the LH Tirana and I thought man that that video sets are only really half finished I didn't actually get to the clear over base and the actual application on the uh, Paint on that project so I thought man I might as well just finish it off because it definitely does deserve to be finished off um, Once I am done on this video set which this may be the last I could make another video where I'm spraying the panels and I'll see how I go but I've had another idea, a top 10 spray gun list. So that's something I'm definitely looking forward to putting together. It's gonna to be a bit of fun, it's something that I haven't done before. And um, yeah, make sure you guys shoot your own favorite spray gun down in the comments below and it may even help sway my decision. But I've already got the top 10 written out on a list. I've just got to put the video together. So I've had a few people ask, oh, will you still be making videos now that you're in Thailand? If anything, I've actually been making more videos because I've got a little bit more time on my hands. At the start, I've had a month off and I've been in Pattaya just living at my little apartment, um, just a little one bedroom, nice little spot. And uh, anyone who's been following me on Instagram will know exactly what I've been up to, just eating lots of nice food and going to the gym and getting fit. I've been staying away from the bars and the drinking and smoking and just living a good, clean lifestyle, having a bit of fun at making videos. And I've actually had a bit more time to work on my website, as I mentioned before. Also had more time to answer some of your guys' questions. So uh, don't be shy to leave a comment or a question below in the uh, comment section. If I don't get back to you, don't feel like uh, I hate you or anything. I just can't get back to everyone because there is still only one of me. And I do have near 300 videos. But as far as how everything else is going to pan out for me here in Thailand, I'm still not 100% sure. Um, the original plan was for me to be the head technical rep for this guy and he was going to be importing DNA paints and that was all going to be awesome and I was going to have all this extra time on my hands and I was going to start having a bit of fun instead of working my absolute ass off. Um, but he's pulled out, he's no longer going to be starting this spray center here in Bangkok by the looks of it anyway and he's instead of being a technical rep I'm going to be doing sales which is absolutely not what I signed up for at the start. Well, not what I went and sold my business and packed my entire life up for anyway. Um, so yeah, worst comes to worst. I've actually met another guy. He's living in Laos and he's got a paint and panel shop up there in Laos. So um, that could be another second option for me. My girlfriend's actually from Laos too. Um, if that doesn't work out, well then I'm back to Melbourne, worst comes to worst, and that's not really necessarily a bad thing anyway. It looks like a totally awesome state-of-the-art BMW repair shop that my uncle has over there, and he's basically just said that the door is open. Whenever you want to come back, you've got the job there. So as far as my videos go, you guys would probably really enjoy to uh, get to watch some of those real nice BMWs getting painted to a completely totally awesome standard with some really nice paint so they use the glazer at waterborne the 90 line up there i've heard sort of mixed reviews on that and it may not be the best paint uh it's a little bit slow for drying and application may not be as good as the 55 line which is a paint that I am very familiar with and I was very happy with the Glazer at 55 line but just yet to use the 90 line. Um, yeah also I hear that if you do have an issue with it then there's no sort of like sanding the base coat which to be honest it's a rare rarity that it even does happen even in uh, 55 line and 99.9% .9 of the time I get my prep right anyway so yeah I can't really see it being that big of an issue. Um, yeah, I'm sure I'd be able to sort it out within two weeks. I'd have it down pat and I do know that the color matching with those profies was generally a bit of a breeze. Um, I, yeah, I'm actually quite good at color matching. I'm, 
I think I'm better at refinishing than these kind of resto jobs, and I think I actually enjoy it a little bit more. Like, I feel that I've done this now, you know. Um, I feel that I'm ready to go back to uh, automotive refinishing, uh, like the smashed work side of thing, where my sole job is to do paint work. So, color matching, masking, and spraying. Forget about the polishing. I'm making more money for the boss, spraying, color matching, and masking, and doing my prep work. Um, and that's, yeah, that's where I really shine. I don't like removing refitting parts. I don't really like doing repairs. Like some of these big jobs, I can have a bit of fun and I get right into it and you get stuck into it. You know, you, you do your panel repairs and you do a bit of rust repairs. But then say for instance, if a little bubble of rust starts coming back or the 20 layers of uh, acrylic paint that are underneath start shrinking back, well then people come back and say, hey, gunman, you're crap. Look at the kind of quality work that you do. To be honest, I would rather work on brand new Audis, BMWs, Mercedes Benz, and I have worked in a prestige shop like that before. I absolutely love it, and I can take a little bit more pride in my work because I'm working on awesome brand new cars every single day. Like, there's no rust. Rust doesn't even exist. You know, the panel beaters have to be good because if they're not good, they just simply won't get the job. Like, um, yeah, so, you know, you, you're dealing with good panel work, so they've they finished their repairs off with 180 grit, which is what you see me do on all my repairs here anyway. But you go to an average smash shop, some of those guys will finish their repairs off with 80 grit, 120 grit. So by the time you're taking it down to 180 or 240 grit, you've ruined the repair. You've got to go and put fine filler back through it all because the panel bed is like, they just don't know. Even if they do know, they don't care. But anyway, that's the job when it's all finished off. It's looking pretty awesome. Overnight, again, it is obviously going to dull off that little bit more. So if you hang around here for another minute, this is what it looks like a couple of days after. Make sure you do go and check out my website, thegunman.net.au. There's links in the description. If you hang around to the very end of the video, there's also a little annotation where you can click on that. If you're on a mobile device, all you need to do is click the little card, which is that little eye symbol up in the top right corner and that has a link that'll take you to my website too. Also, make sure you do check out all my other social media. The links to all that is in the description of this video down below. Again, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching. This has been another Gunman Production.